I wish Rainbow Six Siege would put a workshop mode in like CSGO that would allow you to spawn bots in for aim training purposes. For a game that is getting as big as Siege's, I think this would be a very big step in the right direction. A game like Rainbow Six Siege needs a place for you to hit the aiming bench press. Apex has a bunch of targets for you to shoot at and not much else, and kinda sucks. No! Battalion 1944 has a bunch of targets for you to shoot at, and that also kinda sucks. No! T-Hunt kinda sucks. Too. Still, the only reason I say that it sucks is because of CSGO. CSGO, the senior chad of competitive shooters, has had a lot of time to mature. I'm not trying to make this comparison unfair, but Siege is the junior varsity champ and it needs to hit incline bench a little more, bro. CSGO has a lot of options for people to improve their mouse muscles. It's a big gym, you got your flicks, your tracking, your stationary targets, your moving targets, and everything else in between. You can tailor your training routine on a number of different maps to your heart's content. But Siege is a bit more rudimentary. It's got a bunch of targets for you to shoot at, but it has a lot of quality of life problems that I would like to see improved if possible. So here are five things I would improve in T-Hunt if I could help it. Yeah. Some people like bombers. Uh, boom. Most people don't. I think the main reason people don't like them is because they take more than one shot to kill. And in a game based off of one-shot headshots, it's not a very useful training mechanic. I get the argument that bombers could be used to help you train your tracking, that is, keeping your cursor on a target that's moving. But tracking isn't as important in a game like Siege as it is in games like Halo, Apex, or really any FPS with a long time to kill. Some guns with a lot of recoil, like machine pistols, benefit a little bit because of the one-shot headshot mechanic, from their sporadic recoil patterns and high rate of fire. But when you come across a bomber, all of a sudden you have to keep that reticle on a leash. If I get killed by a bomber in T-Hunt, it just feels like I got unlucky more than anything else. The other two mobs in T-Hunt, who I will refer to as Skinny Boys and Chunky Boys, are fine. But the Chunky Boys have a hood that sometimes looks like a headshot hitbox when it's not. I think that players should be able to customize the amount of mobs they run into in T-Hunt as well as what types. It would allow players to tailor a training experience to what they feel is going to help them out the most. Do you want to practice with the SMG-11 to up your smoke and mute game? Fortunately for you, you can play Sledge. Do you want to practice with the Vector to up your mirror game? Well, you can play this really bad T-Hunt defense mode, and that's kind of it. At the moment, 99.9% .9 of people will tell you the optimal T-Hunt mode to run is T-Hunt Classic, usually on a small map like House, where you can practice shooting a bunch of dudes in quick succession. The problem with this mode is that you can only play attackers. Another problem is that you are stuck to the armor and speed rating of whatever operator you pick. Many Siege players I know recommend to play 3 speeds in T-Hunt. The idea is that you go as fast as you possibly can and take out as many bad guys as you possibly can, and the aiming ability will translate over to regular play when you're playing at a normal pace and not face checking everything. But you'll have that speed if you really need it. Obviously you're stuck to using 3 speeds and that limits your gun options if you go off of this formula. I think you should be able to pick whatever gun and whatever speed and armor rating and T-Hunt you want. Which leads me to my next point. If you're gonna go all out in a T-Hunt and you die, you have to sit through a number of different screens before you can load the thing up again. Kaboom! You could instantly hit a button to spawn again and run into the building, and that would be a huge quality of life update. Otherwise, it encourages people to take the T-Hunt more slowly instead of playing at their max capacity. I think this ultimately is more detrimental to training your aim because if you're really pushing your limit, you'll end up spending more time in the death screen than anything else. You could alleviate this issue through a spawning system or an invincibility mode, whatever the player wants to do. The terrorists could spawn as soon as you take them all out too to minimize loading screen times. If you hit a terrorist in something other than the head, they'll go like this. If you hit a guy in ranked in something other than the head, they'll go like this. SPOT THE LINE! WHERE'S THAT- The flinch that the Terries do doesn't really help, in my opinion. If you're making an effort to practice headshots, this is a circumstance that you don't need to train for. It also makes practicing spray patterns for headshots a little more difficult because in some instances, where you would get a headshot with a spray pattern, it won't happen because the terrorist is lurched over. I guess it's done to mimic how shooting a guy in the hand doesn't count as a head head bot. Everything that I just stated, kind of like Halo's Forge and custom game mode settings, could be done if Yubi gave its players a little bit more autonomy. I think Siege needs to do stuff like this eventually because if the game is going to compete above its weight class, it needs the quality of life elements in games like its biggest competitor, CSGO has. A creation kit where people can make their own maps, with spawn timers, loadouts, etc. will go a long way in fostering community growth, and the sky is the limit. Please consider it, Yubi. What do you guys think T-Hunt needs? I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments below. Subscribe to Disrupt Gaming for more Gunner content. Deuces.